our president will start a war with Iran because he has absolutely no ability to negotiate. He's weak and he's ineffective. So the only way he figures that he's going to get reelected, and as sure as you're sitting there, is to start a war with Iran. Now, I'm more militant and more militaristic than the president. I believe in strength. But to start a war in order to get elected, and I believe that's going to happen, would be an outrage. Iran can be taken down in many ways. Their population is in turmoil. They look at what's happening in Syria and other countries where it looked like it was an impossibility, and it looks like that one's going to collapse also. So Iran can be taken. I would never take the military card off the table. And it's possible that it'll have to be used because Iran cannot have nuclear weapons. But you've got to exhaust other possibilities. And we're in a great position to do it. They know, or they at least must know, that they're in a little bit of heat because there's a lot of pressure to attack. This is a great time to negotiate. Unfortunately, we have a president that doesn't know the first thing about negotiation. We have a real problem in the White House. So I believe that he will attack Iran sometime prior to the election because he thinks that's the only way he can get elected. Isn't it pathetic? Well, it's happening just as I said it would. Iraq is becoming very, very, very close to Iran. Iran will end up taking over Iraq. They're all happy that the United States has been forced to leave. Our negotiators don't know what they're doing. Our president has no clue. We're going to be leaving Iraq. We're going to be giving, handing on a silver platter, the second largest oil reserves in the world to Iran. Now, I've been saying this for two years, three years. You go back and check. Nobody else has said it but Donald Trump. I turn out to be right. They're going to be giving Iraq and the second largest oil reserves in the world to Iran. And man, we are really, really being led by stupid. So the reports are that we caught Gaddafi. Big deal. What do we get out of it? They have the oil. The rebels would have given us everything if we had some leader that knew how to negotiate. The rebels were being routed four months ago, absolutely routed by Gaddafi and his men. And you even see, even with all of our support and all of the support of NATO, which is essentially us, it was very hard to crack them. So here's what happens. We spend billions and billions and billions of dollars. We just absolutely blast the hell out of them. The rebels then go in, take over the place. And now, if we ask for oil, they give us nothing. They say they're great rebels, they're great freedom fighters. We deserve nothing. If four months ago, when they were being routed and just beaten badly and ready to give up, if we would have said we want 50 percent of the oil, they would have said, absolutely, you have a deal. Help us, help us, please, you have a deal. What do we get? We get nothing. If Obama would have backed the people of Iran two years ago, when that country had a big, big problem and the protesters were really making headway, like he backs the protesters in the United States, as they call themselves, Occupy, we wouldn't have any problems right now in Iran. Believe me, that country would have been turned over so fast. Instead, he abandoned those people, and you know what the end result is, and Iran has only gotten stronger. The man does.